What's up, guys? My name is Miles. And my name is Fez. And this is The Commodity. And today we're reacting to the Philippines digital market boom. This video was recommended to us and requested to us by Top Inu De First. This video, or this person made it a, a point to let us know that this is their first suggestion. Words. I wish some of you would do that on your first suggestion. Like, this is our first time. Because I'd feel so bad saying, hmm, never seen you in the Discord before. And then, you know, they're like one of the most common posters. In right. There. That would make me feel bad. So if it is your first time suggesting, suggesting words, uh, just like it was Inu Day First, then let us know in the Discord. And you can find that Discord in the link in the description. Yes. Yeah. So we did another video about the electronic boom. Mm-hmm. And I guess it did so well that people are wanting to know more or wanting us to know more about the economy in the Philippines, hence the digital market boom. Yeah, and what threw me off is in the suggestion, the title was how the Philippines transformed its commerce industry. But I guess that pretty much sums up the same thing as what this video is because it starts off with e-commerce. The Philippines e-commerce landscape, yeah. yep. Yeah, so it's the same thing. It was just titled different between Discord and, and YouTube, so it threw me off. Guys, before we hop into this video, if you would, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. It truly helps us out in getting these videos out to more people. Also, if you would, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. That way you guys can stay informed on our future videos. And if you'd like to help support the channel even more and get an exclusive, exclusive, exclusive YouTube exclusive, short exclusive, shout out, click the join button exclusive, down exclusive, below. Exclusive, so let's hop in and check this out. Exclusive, 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 exclusive. You know, either you do it not enough or at all, or you do it too much. Well, don't be picky. Just be happy what you get. Filipino entrepreneurs have brought in a myriad of changes to the vast industries of the nation's economy. From bringing innovative products and bringing in foreign brands to improve the country's competitive markets, this, along with the shift in consumer behavior from offline to online, will bring in a new billion-dollar industry. One that would end up becoming a key engine of growth for the future that is to come. Huh. Yes, we are talking about the Philippines e-commerce landscape, and by 2022, it has a gross value added of about 24.2 billion US wow. dollars, which accounts for over 5.5% of the entire nominal gross domestic product of the country wow. and has over a million enterprises operating within its ecosystem. This e-commerce boom is leading to the advancement of the country's internet economy. So that's what it is now. And I can only imagine how it's going to keep like growing. Right. Just because we've already, we've already learned you guys are the, the highest uh, social media what would be text the messaging? For that? Well, text messaging, but I would imagine if you're if you're texting, you're on social media. Uh, not necessarily. Either way, you guys are online a lot. Yeah, so no, they use the internet a ton. So I can only imagine if this is where you're at in 2022, where it's going to be in 2030. Compared to what I do, like I'm on my phone 24 seven. Same. So I could like I'm just kind of like how in the world? So it's just like us times everybody right like if i'm not on my phone like looking at it eight times out of ten i've got my earbud in and i'm listening to something while or i'm, I'm, doing I'm always texting especially yeah. at work yeah which is expected to reach over 150 billion dollars by the next decade oh. making oh. the nation one of the fastest digital shifters across the entire I guess world. now i can imagine what so how did like. e-commerce become a success for the country before we move on, don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe for more. The e-commerce ecosystem of the Philippines grew to what it is today, mainly because of a few things. The first is the entrepreneurial drive of the locals. The Philippines is renowned for its so-called micro, small- Turmeric tea. I'm drinking turmeric. Gotcha. I couldn't think of the tea and it just hit me. It's turmeric tea. <laughs> and medium enterprises, hurt my arm doing MSMEs that. for short. There are over 952,620 of these, according to a report in 2020 by the Department of Trade and Industry, and they alone employ over 5.3 wow. million Filipinos. 
These enterprises before and after the COVID-19 pandemic was shifting their offline presence to online, whether that is products, foods, or even tourism. The second factor is the platforms. Of course, we wouldn't have e-commerce without its players. Lazada, Shopee, Zalora, Carousel, and much more have been the key players in bringing these sellers on board the digital train. Okay, so these are different like dropship type companies probably. Shopee, I think. Due to business friendly regulations and the adoption of consumers to the digital world, these platforms have thrived into becoming giant e-commerce businesses that are even becoming a competitive threat to other billion dollar businesses around the globe. An example is Shopee, a Southeast Asian brand e-commerce app that is now around Europe, India, South Korea, and even the Americas. The third factor, which is the bread and life of doing e-commerce, is the logistics industry. The Philippines logistics industry is a huge... Right, I do have one thing to say about this. This is the United States, not the Americas, <laughs> because I've dated some women that are from South America and they would go. If you said the Americas. Crazy. And we use this as the Americas. Um, the United States is one country of the Americas, not the entire country. It's like saying Asia yeah, <laughs> or Asia <laughs> just doesn't count. Now, this works for Europe because that's the European Union flag. Mm -hmm. So. And even the Americas. The third factor, which is the bread and life of doing e-commerce, is the logistics industry. The Philippines logistics industry is a huge thriving business, despite the complex geography of the nation. With growth rates close to 9% per year and a value of over $20 billion by wow. 2023, wow. with over 73 million internet users who shop online and expect a their lot. items brought to their home, the logistics industry has survived and even flourished during the country lockdowns recently. Moreover, according to a report by Google and Temasek, logistics actually became the most attractive sector among the entire e-commerce ecosystem in Southeast Asia. Yeah, because they got to get their stuff Places. plays a crucial role in the sector. Show. The last factor is the e-payment service. This service, Gcash. which is still operated by a small number of players due to its nature and business complexity, has been one of the backbones besides logistics in ensuring that everyone is included in the digital sphere. Regardless, the rise of e-payment services has enabled e-commerce to thrive because it enabled an easier way to transact, reduce the need for cash to be held, and even push consumer behavior due to its ease of use. Moreover, by 2030, DTI is expecting the Philippines to be a cashless society, meaning that e-commerce and e-payments will explode as it by takes their place in the Philippines economy. These factors are all contributing to the very health of the e-commerce world. The future, however, lies in how the government and private enterprises enable a more seamless nation. This seamless society can mean upgrading and enhancing the infrastructure that plays in the telecommunications field. Faster internet would open up a better market, be more secure, and help merchants or sellers to understand digital behavior more efficiently. Establishing fair competitive play regulations is also essential in helping boost the e-commerce market, as there are several players out there who have enough purchasing power to crush its competitors by means of pricing. Furthermore, ensuring <laughs> intellectual it property is regulated will the help time. innovation to thrive further. But lastly, the government has to also continuously enhance its presence as well in the digital realm, whether it's through the very individuals working in the office or having a separate team that supports the e-commerce community. Key initiatives will then help ensure that e-commerce will be the Philippines' next wave of engines okay. for growth. That's awesome. So, e-commerce got even like bigger than it already was in the United States throughout COVID and everything as well. I mean, everybody, everybody was already buying on Amazon and stuff like that, but yeah. it just went insane whenever people were home for two weeks or something like that. I know when I was home for one week for being sick, I know it was during the ice storm, ice storm, this year's ice storm. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and we were home for like three or four days. I spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on just knives and kitchen stuff. Yeah, you did. But I mean, even like Cash App, which is our uh, money transaction between our person popular to person. one. That yeah. one and Zelle. I would say Zelle's. Well, Zelle's more 
Um, bank to bank. And it's it's more like practical now. Yeah. Because you don't necessarily have to pay any fees or anything. Correct. So, it goes straight to your bank account. And Zelle has gotten with most banks. So that's really they cool. They probably cover the fees. Right. But Cash App, I remember using Cash App before COVID, mm -hmm. but not to the extent that I started using it during COVID. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and then they've had it for a while, but doing the tap to pay with your debit or credit cards and then Apple Pay where you just double tap on your phone and touch it to the scanner and it pays. I mean, it's it's crazy, the technology that's that's coming out just for transactions and things. And then today I was buying some shoes, telling you I was looking at the shoes and the pants and stuff, and then I got a notification to uh, pay with a firm or whatever not mm -hmm. a firm um it's something where you pay like four payments yeah kind of like what I, I did with one of my monitors right yeah and i'm thinking like that's kind of cool like I'll oh bet, yeah a firm yeah the well, AFFIRM. there's a firm yeah but i think the one that mine was uh what's it called yeah no it's a firm yeah but i thought that that was cool i mean it's not something that i will probably at least i didn't use it today if there's um, something that you absolutely got to have today or right now but you don't want to spend the money on it or if you don't have the money to spend a hundred percent well that's it. what i'm saying like that will pique people's interest that that don't have that money to pay for it right now and they can pay for it but it, it's the a weekly payment every two weeks oh mine the one i used was every week mm. So I was like, that kind of defeats the whole point. It's all coming out in one month. Right. Yeah, but, no, mine was every other week is what it showed me earlier. Yeah. But no, I, I mean, <clears throat> if they could come up, if the Philippines or Malaysia or any of these countries could come up with something, a better idea of something, you could literally change the market. Well, and the thing is, though, like how they said that uh, that Shopee was coming, to, coming at like Amazon, right. it probably is in their countries. Yeah, I mean, it's probably overtaking in in some of their countries. Just like in Malaysia, they use uh, Panda, uh, the delivery delivery service. Mm -hmm. I, I forgot what it was called. I but, think that's what it is, Panda. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they don't use Uber; they use Panda. Panda. Yeah. So I'm sure e-commerce like this. I mean, it is exploding in these countries for these countries, and and doing more than Amazon and other things are. Maybe I don't know. I mean, Amazon's oh, I know a tyrant. It's, yeah, I know. It's huge. It's like a top three business. I think it's right behind Apple and Alphabet, I believe. And then you got Amazon. But again, you guys come up with something and it just hits. It could take over everything. Yeah, that, I mean that's anybody to be right. fair. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see our future videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. And if you want to support us directly, hit that join button. And with that being said, my name's Miles. And my name is Fez. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Out.